I believe it's live. I can actually test on another phone real fast, but eh, nevertheless. So we have this project. Um, as you likely already know, if you have been involved in this, but what we're going to go ahead and do, we're not going to recommend make file is, uh, we're going to start, I think it's brackets for the link and then parentheses for the actual link. And if we hit preview on the top, right, we can see here that it works. And this is a program that lets you connect to a SQL database. So we're going to go ahead and open that up and run the installer because that installer will set up Heidi because I actually don't have it installed on my computer. All the default links are fine. Uh, we, we can launch, that's fine. And that'll start up Heidi. Um, as far as settings go in preferences, one thing I think is a no brainer. If it is obvious, this UI is such an old school UI. There is a dark mode in here somewhere. I'm pretty sure that yeah, GUI style theme. There we go. Windows 10 dark. That's fine. Restart. Yay, dark theme. Um, okay, so I got Heidi installed, which is here. Uh, some other things is uh, download Go. We're going to go ahead and grab that real quick. And uh, download VS Code. And we got to separate those with a space, I think. And um, download git. This actually should be before. This is probably a good process to follow. Okay. And Another thing I wanted to mention we're actually gonna make these into not headers but like h2s and um, control shift why is this giving me a okay control shift p starts the uh, what is it called Uh, run Run task, run, new prompt comes up. That says, there, cool. Um, alternatively, start a terminal, which is a uh, control tilde and type in the command, go run main.com. So, Example of that, start a terminal, go run main.go. There, there it goes. All right, so in preparation for the folks that will be helping me out is I'm gonna write a test file for item get real quick. So we're gonna call it item get test. And this is gonna be in the package item. The package name is based on the folder name, as you can see here. And we're gonna write a function test called, so func, test, uh, let's call it test uh, item get. 
And you can see on the suggestion field, it's setting up the format of how you run a testing script, which is perfect. And what we can go ahead and do in this test is we're gonna call a function that's in item get. We could technically literally call the item get function. So let's go ahead and do that. I think that'll work. So item get, and then we're gonna pass a C context and return an error based on it. And if error is not nil, then we do a T fatal F, that item get failed with a error provided. And that'll stop the test in that scenario. We didn't actually define C, so let's go ahead and do that, which is gonna be an echo context, which is a, um, it's an interface, so you can't initiate it properly by itself, but I think if we do this, uh, we can actually set up so this wants a HTTP request, right? And it wants an HTT response writer, which response writer is an interface. Uh, so we're just gonna do this. Think that'll work? I don't know what the requirements are for response writer. Let's find that out real quick. So response writer, if we go to definition, requires a header, a write, and a write header. And I don't know what actually implements this. Let's look around for CW does, which is a chunk writer, but that's internal. But what is a chunk writer declared as? It has these. This is a, I think, HTTP test. New, uh, it's not easy. Can I just make this nil? You might not like that, but we'll try it. But see, now the code should work. And the reason I'm running a test is now I can hit run test and it will immediately run this code and try to call this function. And you can see here, it's getting an error because the parameter that was passed has no data in it. We could actually set this, I think. How do we set this? Param, is there a set param? Yep. Can I like set an individual value of a parameter? Param values, that's a get request. There's no actual setting on this. What can I set? Okay, so you go set param names ID, and then I think you say set param values, and then you would say like 1001. I think this is what it's trying to do. Let's try running it again. Okay, so now we have a stack trace error. And this is because uh, da, 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 da. it's trying to connect to SQL and SQL has not been instantiated because we have not started the program properly. It's looking for this. So we'll toss that in here real quick. And instead of returning on failure, we're going to just run a fatal laugh like that. And we can do this in the background. Okay, why are you erring now? There's no l new variables. Oh, because we have a walrus there. Okay, so let's run this again. And that's perfect. So what this does is instead of having to go to the website every time to see the endpoint, we now have a test endpoint that we can run this against. So, um, yeah, we're done. Uh, we can do another one just for fun for like item slot. So we're going to go ahead and make a new file. We're going to call it item slot test.go. So you can see here it's the same as item slot, but this one has test on the end. And what we're going to run is uh, item 
slot short names is what we're testing. So test slot short names, right? And it needs the testing package like this. And what this is just going to call is slot short names, which you pass it a bit. So it'll do like one and then it gives a response, right? And we're going to just fail for now because I don't know what this response really is. And let's see what it runs. It should fail and say none because no ID has one apparently. Slot short names is based on the slot map and the slot map has this array that's being created for everything. So, uh, this bit one should actually be passing a different value. Let's see why that's happening. Do, 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 do. It's iterating the list. It's trying to do a bit shift to find the right ID and then it's sending it back. I don't know. So these are actual integers. So let's try like 32 and see if we get neck. Yes, we do. Okay, so it does work. And so now instead of failing, this is an expected value. So we can go like this. If response equals neck, or does not equal neck, now we fail and say, um, unexpected response to, we'll go like input or slot. like this. And now if you run the test, it should just succeed with no message. Yep. So this basically is a quick test to sanity check if slot short names is calling uh, all this fun stuff correctly and returning the data that we want. So we're done. Uh, slot map, I'm pretty sure, is just a listing of various item slots and their respective values. So that's pretty clean, simple. Um, yeah, so we're done with that. The next thing we need to do, um, spell and, uh, NPC, I believe are both accessible. Somebody asking if I want to hit up Apex and I'm already started. Uh, okay. What we're going to go ahead and do is hop into Iki Emu because they actually have a public server. And as far as I know, that's okay to access. Like, I don't think these credentials are like secretive. But what we want to go ahead and do is we'll set the configuration for connection for the time being to this public IP. So we're going to go to contentcdn.projectiq.net and we're going to access RO. RO and the port instead of 3306 is 16033. And in theory, uh, this will cause the item get function to actually work. Let's see. Oh, access denied. We have credential issues somewhere. Let's figure out why. Uh, content cdn.projectiq.net. Correct. I think the database name is incorrect. Um, I don't know what the database name is. I thought it would be PEQ, but that's my guess on why this isn't working. I have it on my laptop. I might go just peek at that real quick. Yeah, see, access denied for credentials to database Iki Emu. I have a feeling Iki Emu is not an actual database, so I'm going to go ahead and grab that real quick. So give me just a moment. I'm going to go on the other device. And just as I predicted, the database name is called PEQ content. So with that in mind, let's try it again. Item get renderer not registered. <laughs> so this is an error because of these renderers. 
have not been instantiated. How do I do this cleanly? Echo has this template system and you set that on the Echo renderer. Can I set that on this instance? It seems Echo new returns an echo instance, yes. Where is the renderer set? It's just renderer. Basically we can do this. Uh, the, the URL is gonna be tweaked because of where we're starting from. An E template is not a known area and that's because we need to bring the import that I call here, echo template. Uh, that should fix it. Why are you erroring? No new variables. Oh, T is um, already being used. So let's call this TLM, TMPL, so template shorthand. There we go. Let's go ahead and run. All right, so now we're getting pattern match errors. And this is because we're running it from item. I think we have to go up one directory. Item get renderer not registered. Um, let's dump what templates are being registered. Uh, that's not what I wanted. I don't want a pointer, I want the data values. Tree, namespace, text. Uh, honestly, I don't know if tree is what we want or not. Let's try it. So you here you can see the actual data and the definition types. Now item get notes that render is not registered. Is it trying to imply that item get wasn't registered? And if so, is it not finding this file? Because if you notice, this thing on the tree is only mentioning head.html. You see that? Um, why? I have a wild card to get all HTMLs. They're all in templates. Templates should be honestly a an array. I don't like that it isn't. Unless it needs it to render name. It's a little weird. I'm just trying to make it so I can do a quick test with Echo without having to run the whole server and everything. Renderer not registered. The renderer is registered right there. Is there something else I'm missing with the renderer? Not that I can tell. Let's add echo and or uh, debugging and such to it. Let's see if we can get better insight on what the heck's going on. No? Oh, I'm using echo new. I need to use this instance of echo that I've been setting all this stuff on. Okay, so now we have a nil pointer reference to, do, 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 do. what are we missing? Item get has a nil pointer reference So this function calls this function and it's telling me that it's got a no pointer reference on, oh, it's trying to send the response header and there's no response object. This is because we made this nil. So uh, how do we make a response writer? 
Uh, let's do Golang response writer. I want something that returns a response writer. You need to wrap response writer to, craft the re or to capture the response data. Yeah, so they're just implementing a new response writer. It's a little gross, but let's see if I can make this work real fast. So we instantiate this thing called response writer wrapper. And in this case, they set the status code and they write the header and then they just return. Let's see what this does. Can I just instantiate this? Can we just literally pass this? Respon response writer wrapper. Oh, no? Why can't we use this? It's missing method header. Do they implement header and I just missed it? No, right, right header. Okay. Okay. We have func status int, we just want a func. So in other words, all we have to do is make a header function and what's wrong now? Have func want func net HTTP header. So this needs to respond. With HTTP header. Which looks like it wants, what is this? A string array with string elements is what it wants. There you go, empty header. And it's okay with that. Let's, let's run it, let's see if we can just get it to at least succeed. Okay, so we're still getting a nil pointer reference error. And why? So we call item get, we get to this line. It runs this line and we get a nil pointer because W was never instantiated. Um, what I'm actually gonna do is do a refactor real quick and rename this symbol to lowercase r. And also, um, I don't care about W right now. So I'm gonna comment this out. And this, and comment out the writer for now. And I just want to make sure if I can run this because it's purely mock. You know, I'm not there. Success. Um, of course, we aren't getting data out, but we could potentially just output the body afterwards. So we can do this uh, W equals the new response writer. And then what we can do is say W. Uh, write or w dot body bytes and we can stringify this and then we can fatal f on it for now which means you don't have to stringify it because we have a wrapper for that perfect so it fails but it does dump out the data so we could do a printf same format. And now if we fail this test, we can see the data output and we don't ever have to run the whole program. We can just um, make a temporary error. And now we get the output of the HTML being rendered. Perfect. And then otherwise it will, yeah. So now this works without uh, doing anything too crazy. Cool.
I know that was quite a bit of work, but now we could wrap this into like a testing suite because you're not going to need to modify this stuff too often. So we're going to go ahead and make a I guess call it test data and put this inside of it. We're going to call this uh, uh, init echo. And what we're going to do instead is return either an error or the echo client. Something like that. Well, actually, we're going to return the client, the uh, content, context, and the error, if applicable. So we want echo client, which is C, right? No, that's the context. And the context is, I think, just literally echo context. And now this one will return nil nil. Uh, e template needs to be instantiated over here. Okay. Template's fine. Okay, why do you still have an error? Echo is undeclared. You didn't auto complete my echo in corporation. You want this crap in here. Wrong file. Yeah, you're fine. Take that out. You're good. You need echo. Right? Echo doesn't know what client is, and content is not declared by echo or context. What is the client name? I thought I'd do it right here. Echo new. It's an echo echo. Okay, so they self name the client. And writer has C, that's good. Uh, the response writer wrapper, that's also something, right? Like, uh, <laughs> this is gonna get a little weird, but let's uh, take the response writer wrapper. We'll toss that in here. That'll make this happy. We'll go ahead and capitalize R and B. Actually, we, we should do that with rename. Same thing with body. Done. Now, uh, template should be good now. Why are you erroring? Value instruct literal. Wait. Can I use. Why? Oh, this should be HTML template. Okay. I think that's done. Now, and here, we're gonna go test data, and then whatever this function is, which is init echo. And now we get C and, well actually we get E, C, error. We don't care about E. If error's there, then we do a, something like that. You don't know what test data is? Test data is this package right here. So we can use this and teach it what test data is. Oops, we got a quote at the end. Yeah, give me over here. There we go. So now this should run undefined W. Oh, W would be the it should be a response object to init echo. Init echo, you're supposed to return W as well. And that is a instance of response writer wrapper. There. 
right? Why are you erring? Oh, body is now capitalized. Now, we can spit out the data with the temporary error. And we have a test endpoint. Oops, I didn't mean to click you. Cool. So there we go. Now we have a testing endpoint. And we can now write something similar. We can copy this even. Why are you telling me a test error? I don't know what that was. All right, so we're going to change this name to MPC get test. Pretty much every instance of item. Dude, I don't have sensitive replace on here. Let's let's fix that. Thank you. And we're going to change all these item instances to NPC. Like that. And now if we run this, we don't have to start the program up, but we can see here, uh, obviously MPC gets not working. So we can come back to here and we need to build out this code. So let's go ahead and start up ID SQL. And this would be the steps I want uh, them to follow. So let's see if we can, is there a way to like landmark the time? Like, is there a timer? Yes, 31 minutes in. So we're going to go back to here. 31 minutes in. We're going to just put that comment there. And now we're going to go ahead and get started on the actual parts that they will want to do. So you can see here, here's the connection info. And here's a session manager. So we're going to start up a new session. And for the host name IP, we're going to change it to content-cdn.projecteq.net. For the user, we're changing it to RO. For the password RO, the IP or the port is 16033. It's noted there. And the database is going to be PEQ underscore content. We're going to go ahead and hit save. That puts it up here. It is unnamed. I think we can rename that to, let's just call it uh, uh, RO PEQ. Okay. Let's go ahead and hit open. And I typed a typo project. So let's fix that real quick. There we go. And now we are able to connect it to the Heidi SQL. And inside of Heidi SQL, this client will show all the tables that are in EverQuest as a read only database, right? We can go to query and type in select star from MPC types. And then we can say like limit 10. So there's only 10 results. And then you press F9. And here is the first 10 results of NPC types getting outputted. So we're going to basically take the NPC get function, which currently is basically doing items. And we got to fix the table name, which is NPC types. We can actually go to this database like this and then go to the table tab up here and see here's all the fields available to NPC types. There's 123 of them. And for the time being, we care about a ID. That's a good one. Name is good. And, you know, we can do like, let's say level. And I don't know, let's do like HP. So now we have a filter and we're grabbing four different fields. And now that we got those four fields, let's update these to be the same. So level and HP. If we come back over here, you can actually tell what type of data types each of these are as well. So you can see your HP is int, class, race, or int, int, just different size of int, level, ID is int, and the name is string or text. So we can go ahead and take these two data points out. And now this mapper maps with this. And in theory, we do need to make MPC get. So we're gonna grab item get, copy this, and go to uh, NPC get. So now we have the template of NPC get created. Uh, we're going to define it from item get to NPC get. Um, and we know that we're not getting slot anymore. We're getting what level? We're getting HP. Was there anything else I was grabbing? Level and HP. Nope, that was it. So we can take out weight. We're not using that anymore. And now we've created a template for MPC get to render 
the data that comes out of here. Now, if we go back to NPC get test NPC get and then run with the temporary area in, in theory, there we go. So 1001 is guard mezzed and he has level, he's level five and has 130 hit points. We can kind of replicate this actually by taking this query, boop, copying it and changing the colon ID to 1001, hit F9, guard mezzed, level five, 150 hit points, ID number is 1001. There you go. And of course, if we start up the server, and I'm actually gonna do something real quick to simplify everyone's life. I'm gonna go ahead and do a print line and go HTTP localhost 8080 like this. And what that does is now when it starts, you're gonna get a URL that you can just hold control and click. And it should take you right to the site here. Another thing I'm gonna do real quick is in an index, which currently just has like this as an index page, we're gonna make a quick href and put in here um, npc and we're gonna put a link for uh, item. And we're gonna put a link for spell. And if we restart the server, refresh the page, now we have links. It's a little gross it's on the bottom left like that. I think that has to do with this margin top. Let's test real quick. There is tools to auto refresh, but for now I'm just hitting control C and refresh. There we go. So now the index page has th four links, the skeleton documentation, which that's fine. We hit MPC link. Boom, guard mess, level five, HP 150. So that replicates what the test does. And item link works great, cloth cap. And then spell link is erroring because we have not fixed that query yet. So we're gonna go ahead and do that real fast. So let's cancel that. Let's go over to uh, NPC get test, paste it here, rename it to spell get test, do a search for all the words of NPC, hold alt enter then control shift P, sensitive replace, and put in spell. And now we have a test file for spell get, right? We're gonna have to copy the NPC get uh, template. Whoa, what are you doing? I'm used to uh, spell get, I'm used to let, or, uh, OSX. Again, we're gonna redeem the NPT, NPC to spell. And now we have everything ready. If we run this, it's likely gonna fail uh, because the database doesn't have spells, as we already know. So to fix that, we got to go find the spell database, which is called spells new. The naming convention is not standardized, really, but that's fine. So spells new. Okay. We know that spells new is a table you can see here, and it has all sorts of unique named fields in here. By the way, this table has 237 fields that we can access. And if we just browse the data up here on the data tab, we can kind of get an idea of what sort of information's in here. So you can see the name of the spell, you can see uh, like action emotes that are hard coded in the spell file. And then you get like the range of the spell, if it has an AOE effect on the spell, um, push back and push up are, you know, knockback stuff, how long it takes to cast, things like that, right? So for the time being, uh, we're going to go ahead and tweak the query that's called spell get so that the fields we grab are going to be like ID, name, uh, what else should we grab? Let's just grab like, I don't know, uh, let's do cast time. And you can see here, I'm just copying what that says and mana. Okay. We'll keep it simple. And because we add new fields, we got to make sure it maps up here properly. So um, we need to grab all these ones because they're no longer used and type them in. So cast time. Technically, I think you can just do this. Same thing with mana. Done. Now we can go to spells test and hit run. Let's see if it just runs real quick. Nope, we got an error. Missing destination name cast time. So what this is telling us is that 
it tried to map the data result to this and is failing. And it's likely because this needs to be capitalized. Let's try it. Because I'm pretty sure the struct scan has a detection. Nope, it still doesn't like it. So there's something it may want this to be lowercase. Let's try it. Okay, so we got past the struct map, right? So now the data is getting put into this struct, but now we're having an error of executing spell get at level, can a value of out field level. So this is because we copied the template, but we didn't update these fields that we're dumping out. So obviously we need to change these from level and HP to, and I just copied over the fields, mana, mana, like that. Then we can go ahead and run the test again. Ta-da, we got data. And 1001 is weak poison, which has no cast time or mana. So that's not a great example. We can actually verify that real quick. Select from, let's go grab the select query right here. We'll change the word to 1001. And as you can see here, weak poison doesn't have it. What does? Does 1002 have it? No, how about like, uh, I don't know, 52? We're just grabbing random spells. Abundant drink, okay. So we're gonna query 52 instead, like that. And now at least all three fields are being utilized. They're not just default values. So the cast time's 4,000, the mana's 25. We got that working. So now if we start the server up again, go to terminal, run the program, and then we refresh the website. Now spell 1001 has weak poison. And if we change this to 52, we get abundant drink, which is spelled in the ID 52. And here's the cast time and mana. So there you go. Success. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and push this up as is. So just to review all the changes we've done in source control, we have main.go. We added in that print for localhost. In readme, I added a bunch of download links of how to get your environment set up for this. In db.go, I've changed the query from a localhost server database to the public one. Uh, for item get, I've changed, I made a test script called test item get that lets you quickly test the function without having to start the server up every time. I also wrote a test for the slots uh, names. I also wrote a test for MPC and a test for spell. Then NPC get, I refactored the struct and the query so that it now works. Same thing with spell. And test data is just some boilerplate code that gets used on each of the tests that essentially initializes the echo client, binds the template, and prepares a response writer that we can kind of capture and just do quick tests with. Uh, then we have the endpoints, which we're actually gonna tweak this spell link to like 52, just so that when you go to the index page, like so, and you go spell link, you get a little bit more informative data points. So fix that, but these are just quick links. Then we have MPC get, which has just the new template with obviously the data points that we've captured so far going in and there we go. And we're gonna call this uh, added SQL queries for item or for what spell and MPC. Eh, it's an okay description. There's a lot that just happened, but it's kind of prep work. So we're gonna commit that, sync up the changes. This will make the URL You can see my commit here, perfect. And there we go, all my commits. So, somebody messaged me, it's Grim. Hey dude. And that's it. I think that's all I'm gonna do for this recording. It looks like three viewers are going on. I'm not sure who you are, but hi. Hope you're enjoying my kind of crash course on learning coding um, to kind of explain what's going on with this. I have two friends that want to learn programming. And what I'm doing is I'm writing a EverQuest um, database query 
you know, really simple website. And I'm using it as kind of a platform for them to learn some techniques and concepts on how to write a website. So I'm keeping things super simple for now. Hey, thanks for the follow, Daytruder. Day <laughs> I don't know how to say your name. Uh, but yeah, so we're doing it in Golang. Uh, <laughs> Golang wasn't necessarily like, I don't know. Personally, I find Golang super easy. There are some complexities like, oh man, that's a map struct. That's kind of confusing, but it's confusing in all languages and even like declaring structs and stuff. But the truth is, is once you get used to Golang, it's super easy and it's super strict. You know, if you do a typo or something, it's very quick to pick it up and it won't let you compile until you resolve all the conflicts and stuff, right? It's a very strict language. So I think it's really friendly for newbies. And yeah, um, pretty much at this point, I'm likely going to go ahead and stop the stream. I may start up again in an hour or so because I'm going to be reaching out to the two people that are learning and I'm going to be breaking down some assignments for them. Uh, what they'll be doing is, I think just to start, to keep it simple, is I want them to be able to extend the fields that are being collected on their given responsibilities. Um, Grimlock worked on MPC, and I want him to be able to add in fields that will be queried and then also be outputted to the data in the HTML page. And I also want them to learn how to use the test because that simplifies life while you're, you know, implementing code. And yeah, that's that's going to be their tasks. Su super straightforward to start. And uh, we'll get it more and more complex as we go. So if you've been watching, thank you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop. I'm planning to have these also recorded on my YouTube channel with the same name as Twitch, which is Zachary, spelled weird. And uh, expect more of these to come soon. I'm just going to be streaming the whole experience so if you don't know programming it may be insightful for you uh most of this just may be helpful just to see how somebody debugs and fixes things and then if you are interested in helping to contribute i can expand the tasks and you can hop in and have fun contributing to an actual website as it gets made so anywho